Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I'm going to start off by doing some coloring. So I'm working with a digital stamped. This is by a wonderful illustrator. Her name is Amanda Hicks and she sells her digis uh, in her Etsy shop and the name of the shop is I'll leave a link to it in the description box below but the name is super cute she is the whimsical art twitch which I think is uh super super awesome and the image I'm illustrating or coloring is called uh Tomta Gnome and this I think there are a couple different variations and this one is Love Eternal which I think is fantastic because it's um, you can have it representative of uh, different things. So um, it can be uh, two women who are partners. It can be sisters. It can be friends. So really, really awesome image. Um, and I am coloring with my Ohuhu markers. I have my swatch book off to the side there. So if you own Ohuhu's as well and you're interested in the color blends I'm using, then um, they are on screen for you. Normally, I tend to color dark to mid to light and back again, just depending on whether I um, feel like I need to darken some of the um, shadows a little bit more because basically as I color, I go over the same area multiple, multiple times. So with the addition of each new layer, I will go over what I've already previously colored. And that way you get a, a smoother blend because as you go, as you go lighter, the lighter colors tend to have more of, um, just the alcohol sort of blending solution. So they, it does tend to bleach out, uh, what's underneath it. And the other, the other reason to, um, kind of go over with a second or a third pass is, once your alcohol marker coloring dries, you'll also notice that it, it lightens up. And so you always want to just kind of reevaluate how, how things look after it doesn't take long, but just, you know, after the ink has had a chance to dry. And that way you can make the determination if you feel like you need to darken some areas. Um, you can kind of lighten some areas because as I mentioned with, um, lighter markers, there is more of that alcohol blending solution in them. And so that can bleach out colors. So, so it's possible. It's just, there's some limitations as to how much you can really lighten up an area that's already been colored. So I would definitely, you know, start on the lighter end and because you can always add, you can always add more and you can always darken more easily. And we're, we're almost done with the coloring here. It's, um, it goes by really fast. I am speeding it up quite a bit, but, uh, I do feel like coloring with markers is for me faster than, uh, coloring with color pencils. <laughs> so, um, so I do enjoy it. And at this point, I do have quite a large, uh, set of Ohuhu markers. And I have to admit, Initially, when I was first getting into alcohol markers, I did not um, understand the, the value of having so many different colors, but it definitely helps you uh, find uh, markers to blend together more easily when you do have a larger, a larger set. And Ahuhus are very, very affordable. Okay, so then I'm going to move on to um, starting to put together the rest of my card here now that my colored uh, illustration is complete. I have, this is actually copy paper that I am lining with some double-sided adhesive tape. I I have double-sided adhesive tape in wide rolls, but I also buy them by the sheet. And the reason why I'm lining this um, bit of just lightweight, super lightweight copy paper, nothing special, it's not cardstock, 
Um, the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to create um, a twisted ribbon effect. This is something that I learned uh, somewhat recently on a live stream that um, we I hosted over on Kim Creates Facebook page. And she taught us this really fun um, sort of paper technique. So I've just got this um, strip here, this panel, and I've scored it every uh, one inch. And I'm going to, I've already picked out two pattern papers and these are double-sided and I, I plan to use both sides. And I'm cutting them into half inch strips and I just need three strips and that's going to give me enough to uh, create the pattern that, that you'll see in a moment. It's the, it's a twisted ribbon, it's pretty cool, lots of fun, very easy, and I'm starting with whole sheets of pattern paper here, but because it only requires half inch strips, you, this would be a really great scrap buster too. So it would be fantastic for, for that as well. On, for this particular pattern paper that I have here, and this can, this panel, you could make any size you want. So this could be any, any width. Um, my panel happens to be two and a half inches, but you know, you can, um, alter this to, to whatever you prefer. And the idea is that these strips are going to, uh, going to crisscross as if they are ribbons that are, um, you know, intertwined or, or twisted. And the score lines that we, put in will help us to position these half inch strips of paper. And I'll, right now, all I'm doing is a little bit of a dry fit just to, just to see how I want to um, lay out this pattern. The pattern paper I'm using is pretty cool because on, on the one side, they are kind of the reverse of each other. So on the one side, it's um, small white dots on um, a colored background and when you flip that over it's that color of dots on a white background so it makes this twisted ribbon um, effect uh, kind of neat because it, it it's uh, actually using both sides of the same pattern paper and it does make it seem like it's a ribbon that's kind of twisting back and forth so here what I'm doing is I'm uh, using the score lines as a guide for how to place or position my strips of paper here. So I'm lining up the top edge of my um, pattern paper, these half inch strips. So the top edge extends from the top, um, uh, from one score line, the top left edge of one score line, and then the top of my strip will go all the way to the score line below it on the right edge. So that pattern just continues. It's a little bit hard to tell on the lighter print, but this is gonna alternate from pink to purple. And that's just going to continue to repeat all the way down. So the top edge of my pattern paper is going to meet up with um, one score line on the left edge. Then that's the top edge of that same strip is going to extend all the way across to the right hand edge, but to the score line below it. And, and then you can add additional strips to fill out the very, the very top and the very bottom. And as you see, I, I'm trimming the sides as I go and continuing to use that that strip. So you don't, um, it, you waste very little and you can um, you can pretty much fill the this entire, at least this size panel that I'm using with, um, with, I think I might have had to cut one more strip, but usually just three strips is, is about enough. And so um, once I get this in, I'll fill in the bottom um, as well, just to make sure that the the pattern completes. So there's a little there's a little um, bit at the bottom here that that requires a small strip, 
And um, I think I actually put the wrong color strip initially and had to had to glue over top of it. But you basically just want to repeat the the pattern that you have so that they alternate. Although you could play with this a little and just see, you know, what um, what different patterns you can create. You don't necessarily have to follow the um, this exactly as I'm doing it, but I think the effect of it is is pretty fun. And so now that now that I kind of know the technique, it'll be it'll be interesting to just kind of play and uh, see how to alter this and what different patterns I can come up with. So here. As I'm attaching um, this layer over top, I am basically connecting um, the two strips that are the same color so that it seems like it's uh, reaching one end and it seems like it's a continuous piece of ribbon that's you know going from edge to edge and it's just being folded in on itself as it crosses back over to the other side. And um, and we have both, we have the two colors crisscrossing. And of course I chose the purple and pinks because that's how I uh, colored in my Tomta uh, gnomes. And so pretty fun. Um, this will be like a little bit of an accent panel uh, for my card. And I think after that's when I realized that I had the wrong color. <laughs> and so before I um, glued over top of it, I had to make sure I corrected that because otherwise if the piece is glued on top of it, it's going to be hard to, hard to fix. Um, if I were to do this again, I might consider actually um, using instead of white. So I used just white copy paper, but it might be interesting to use solid color cardstock. So you have a different color in the background. So that might be something else to experiment with as well. I went with the copy paper because once you layer up all of these crisscross strips, this panel d can get a little bit thick. It can uh, really start to stack up and I think it ultimately ends up being, you know, in some areas, um, if you start with a base of cardstock, it, it would uh, in some areas be three layers of cardstock thick. And so the copy paper just helps to keep everything a little bit more thin, a little bit more um, lightweight because you don't really you don't really need it um, to be uh, super heavyweight. But as I mentioned, it would be kind of interesting to to use solid color, like a colored cardstock instead of just white behind there. So in that case, I would I would stick to maybe using something a little bit lightweight, like maybe a 60 pound weight um, cardstock. So here I have my card base, which is USA two, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I've got some really light pink uh, cardstock that um, I've cut to the full size. And then I've got some purple cardstock that uh, I've cut to just a bit wider than my um, my twisted ribbon panel. So that I have a border, not all the way around all four edges, but a border around um, uh, along the two edges, the left and right edge. And now attaching this is going to be super easy because I did line that copy paper with double-sided adhesive. So this entire back is um, adhesive backed already. So that made it super easy to attach that. And so that is um, the panel. And um, and then I'm sort of debating whether I need this light pink layer or if I want to just leave it white. And that's where I think if I had maybe put a little bit of color uh, instead of the co white copy paper, maybe having um, leaving the white of the card base would have been okay. But it felt like it was just too much, too much white. And so that's why I decided to to add this um, light pink. And as I mentioned earlier, this is cut to the full size of the card. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'll, um, with my, I, <laughs> the trick that I learned with 
being um, kind of uh, getting my white gel pens to work more um, like to flow, I guess, more smoothly. I learned it from uh, Crafty Mama Diaries here on YouTube. So she and I were on the same design team together and she suggested that what works for her is to just kind of scribble on your hand. <laughs> and that I think because maybe it's the warmth of your of your skin and, and just because I used to just scribble on paper but that didn't that didn't seem to help a lot. It helped a little bit, but then you know it would get kind of dry and scratchy again. But ever since I've been, uh, I took Helen's suggestion of um, marking on my hand. It it definitely works. And for every gel pen, because I thought <laughs> for the longest time I just you know wasn't having good luck with the brands of gel pens that I've purchased and. And uh, that's not really the case. Like once I learned this trick, all of them work really, really well, very consistently, smoothly. I have the, um, I've got the Sakura Jelly Roll pens, which are fantastic and uh, work really well. And I have the Uniball uh, Signo white gel pen, which um, is fantastic as well. So, so it's just that little trick. And so if you, if you struggle with white gel pens, um, that's a little trick from Helen of Crafty Mama Diaries. <laughs> so give that a shot. I'm attaching on to my, um, so this I've c gone ahead and fussy cut my uh, colored in image. And since a portion of my image, I want to actually hang uh, over top of the twisted ribbon panel and then a portion of it's going to hang off the side that is hanging off that panel I want to um, try to get this to match all of that thickness of the um, twisted ribbon panel so I've just used some low profile foam just to bring that try it's not going to match the thickness exactly of the pattern paper and you know the solid color card stack of the panel there but it's going to bring it a lot closer and that way I when I attach this it's going to seem it's going to feel a lot more level and then I can just uh, apply glue on that left half and so the last thing I did was I um, stamped out a sentiment uh, backed it with some um, solid color cardstock and glued that right on top of my image and that's my final card I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you're curious to check out Amanda's uh, digital stamps there's a link to her Etsy shop in the description box below. Thanks again. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.